Church. It's a bourgeois institution, Emma. Well, did you ever see Jacob again? Only once in 1893 when I was ill in Rochester. But his name remained with me to haunt me. In 1908, the government denaturalized him, which effectively made me a woman without a country. In 1919, J. Edgar Hoover took steps to deport me and you, Sasha. And several thousand others. My lawyer, Harry Weinberger, got me a temporary stay and a chance to appeal my case to the Supreme Court. My case, but not yours, Sasha. So I withdrew my application for a writ of error and left on the boat with you and the other deportees. I had to leave. If I ever finish writing the autobiography of Alexander Berkman, I had to leave will be its title. We both had to leave. Russia, America, then Russia again. I feel so close to both, though I'm no longer a citizen of either. Wherever I am, I'm sick and tired of always hearing how everything's better over here. There's something wrong with any country you dare not criticize. Where the people are incited to hate and to fear. And those who speak out are indicted as spies. So why don't you go back? To Russia. When the revolution came, we did. And they gave us the red carpet treatment <laughs> till we brought Lenin a petition. Ah, товарищ Berkman, и товарищ Goldman, очень приятно с вами познакомиться. Come on, man. We wanted to give you our resolutions. You think I understand English? Not a word. Although I spent so many years in foreign countries. Isn't that funny? What resolution Moscow Conference Anarchist? Here are the resolutions of the Moscow Anarchist Conference. Among them is a petition to legalize our work and to release our comrades from prison. I shall submit it to the next session of the Executive Committee, but I wouldn't worry about such a trifling thing if I were you. No true revolutionist would. Comrade Lenin, we fought in America for the political rights even of our opponents. What kind of a regime persecutes people like the great philosopher Peter Alexeyevich Kropotkin merely for their opinions? Bourgeois sentimentality. Bourgeois sentimentality. The revolution's engaged in a life and death struggle, and here you're lamenting over a little bloodletting. It's absurd. You'll just have to get over it. I've never gotten over it. Not over the bloodletting at Kronstadt in 1921. Those sailors who'd given their life blood for the revolution just wanted to say in their own government and not to have to rely on Moscow for everything. Sasha and I tried to mediate a compromise, but Lenin and Trotsky sent in the Red Army and pulled them down. Tens of thousands of them. That's when we knew our own days in Russia would be numbered.
But of what importance was that worth, except as the vaguest precondition for all that was to come? By one real birth, or rebirth, or anyway, the point at which I came alive <laughs> was a birth by hanging, if you will. A single word recalls it all, Haymarket. Thank you. 